Hi, I'm Joanna Schwartz. I'm a postdoctoral researcher here at Lawrence Livermore National Lab and a polymer chemist. I do a lot of work with 3D printing and making the next generation of polymeric materials, such as this cute little guy. And in general, I work with a lot of different additive manufacturing processes, like volumetric additive manufacturing, as you see here. My name is Maggie Metriessa, and I'm a polymer chemist. Not only do I care about polymer, but their impact on the environment. I work a lot with aerogels and uh, material that could decompose uh, after we are done with them. So these are great insulator and we could use them as windows as well for space. But when we're done with them, we could actually degrade them by using a strong base and taking them back to their monomer. Hey everyone, my name is Jia Huang. I'm a polymer chemist here at the Lawrence Livermore. I work a lot with 3D printing materials, so my goal is to make a sustainable and recyclable 3D materials. Hey, welcome to the Advanced Manufacturing Lab here at Lawrence Livermore National Lab. In general here, we work with many different types of materials, from polymers to ceramics and metals. As a polymer chemist, I work here in this wet side lab where we work with mainly polymer materials and additive manufacturing processes like melt material extrusion, stereolithographic printing, and next generation processes like volumetric additive manufacturing. In particular, Maggie, Sidji, and I, we all work heavily in additive manufacturing or 3D printing to change the way we design structures in the world around us. There are many different types of 3D printing and each of these requires a different type of materials, including melt material extrusion, where we use heat to melt thermoplastic filament or linear polymer and extrude it out of a nozzle onto a, a build surface, rastering that material around in a layer by layer process, building structures up that way. Direct ink write, where instead of a thermoplastic solid filament, we use gels or pastes. And there we can extrude materials. And what's really interesting about direct ink write is we can have composite materials, including ceramics, metal powders, silica particles, all incorporated into resins that can be freestanding gels or cross-linked and cured through thermal or photo methods. Lastly, there's photo-based methods solely, such as stereolithography, two-photon polymerization, and volumetric additive manufacturing. These photo-based methods are exciting as the polymerization chemistry happens directly during the printing process. Chemists and material scientists can dictate the properties of these printed parts simply by changing the resin and the monomers and additives incorporated into that resin during the printing. In order to make the next generation of materials, we first need to synthesize them. Uh, thankfully, here at Lawrence Livermore National Lab, we have a number of people capable of doing that. And so we make the next generation of materials from the monomer to make the polymers that we can eventually 3D print. Once we print materials, we need to be able to characterize them. That includes metrology, imaging, and uh, mechanical characterization, among many other capabilities. In this case, we need to have this equipment here so that we can readily make materials, print them, and characterize them all within the same facility. As we make materials and resins, we need to be able to characterize their properties. We use instruments like this, the Fourier Transform Infrared Spectroscopy, or FTIR, to measure the chemical composition of those materials. In addition to their chemical composition, we need to understand their viscosity, their printability, their bulk curing kinetics. That uses instruments like photorheology or rheology, as well as particle size analysis. We need to be able to take images of our materials and how they react, as well as understand their thermal properties through characterization techniques like dynamic scanning calorimetry or DSC. And lastly, you know, if we have these parts, we want to be able to characterize their mechanical properties as well. And so we use instruments like this, dynamic mechanical analysis or DMA, or intron testing to then take these samples that we've printed or made and characterize them mechanically. The downside of 3D printing, as you can clearly see, is you produce a lot of waste. In terms of melt material extrusion, in principle, you could take this, you could melt it down and use standard thermal mechanical recycling to recover this material. But in the case of stereolithographic methods where you photo cure the object, you create a permanent thermoset. And in this case, it's cross-linked. There's no melting it, there's no breaking it down, there's no recovering that material. And so this waste is permanent and non-recyclable and not sustainable. And so, so really fundamentally to make the next generation of 3D printing materials, 
we need to make recoverable, sustainable, deplumerizable, stereolithographic cured resins. For this reason, Maggie, Sidia, and myself are part of multiple teams here at Lawrence Livermore National Lab, working to create deplumerizable, dynamic, and recyclable thermoset materials for use in photo-based AM methods. By changing the chemistries used in the backbone and cross-linking of the thermoset materials, we can incorporate functional groups that make the material capable of having the wear and thermal resistant benefits of cross-linkable thermosets, but also capable of being broken down, depolymerized, and or reprocessed after the part is no longer needed. What is critical in these depolymerizable thermoset materials is control over the bake down, and we do this through stimuli such as heat, light, chemical sensing, and pH. For example, the parts in these vials are cross-linked and will not melt or break down in ambient conditions. But when we place them in a basic solution, we can see the part disappear over time. In the future, someone could recapture the monomer of the material and reuse it for future science. As we continue to develop dynamic and reprocessable thermoset materials, the more sustainable 3D printing can be as a field. Here at LLNL, this is just one example of how we work towards solving societal scientific challenges and make the next generation of 3D printing polymers.